Uh, I was asking some questions earlier about uh, technologies that you guys are into. Um, who's into, who's, who knows about Prometheus? Um, does anybody use Prometheus? Um, no, there's a few of us. Uh, all right, well, good. Well, allow me to introduce you to this uh, piece of open source monitoring software, Prometheus. Um, well, it's good to, well, it's, it's bad when you make assumptions about what folks know, so, so good. So uh, Prometheus is an open source piece of software. It is inspired from Borgmon. <clears throat> um, if you don't know what Borgmon is, uh, it's a monitoring system used internally at Google to monitor Google's Borg deployment. Borg is something of the predecessor to um, the external open source project Kubernetes, and so uh, a handful of engineers from the, that, that were SREs at Google um, had exited Google about four or five years ago. Some went to Soundbox and um, I forget a couple of the other companies, about four of them, Brian Brazil, Julius Volz, <coughs> Bjorn, whose last name I can't pronounce, um, and Fabian, uh, all friends of mine. Uh, all have had to tutor me in the ways of, of Prometheus, all very opinionated about how Prometheus works. Uh, so again, an open source uh, tool written in Go, uh, small binary, comes in two binary packages. One of them is uh, a binary that you deposit on your system. You point it at nodes on your network that you'd like to uh, pull, statistics, pull metrics from, very much so in the format that Carlo was discussing earlier about a slash metrics HTTP endpoint that you'd reach out to, that this binary reaches out to, and to use Prometheus parlance, scrapes. It pulls for metrics, it scrapes for those metrics. Um, it's small, it's written efficiently, they've built in a lot of their experiences and learnings into it. It's uh, sort of within the container ecosystem and the cloud native ecosystem, somewhat popular. Um, given that it's free and it's kind of a go-to tool to begin to uh, understand how to maybe monitor containers and some things in that space. Um, the second binary that's part of this project is called Alert Manager, which we were going to speak about today, but this is a lightning talk. So, um, so we're not going to do that. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit of what Alert Manager is. It performs the function of this, um, well, of receiving events from that other binary that's sitting there scraping umpteen hundred nodes, and it deals then with distributing uh, those alerts to other systems uh, that handle that do alert management. Um, uh, yep. Hey, there's there's a, there's a good looking guy right there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason that this is up there is is really if uh, if you'd like to harass me sometime other than this evening. Uh, feel free. You know, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk shop. Um, so I already asked you about Prometheus, whether or not you use it. A couple of you do. Uh, you know, I'd recommend, um, so, I, so uh, Carla mentioned KubeCon before. That's, um, that is the Kubernetes conference. Uh, who's familiar with Kubernetes? Just like you heard of it, whether or not you're using it or not. Yeah, very good. Anyway, KubeCon is the, uh, the Kubernetes conference. Um, but really anymore, it's the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's, the, the CNCF's uh, premier flagship conference. And it's about Kubernetes and 15 other projects. One of those is Prometheus. Uh, and so uh, I had given a talk uh, about six months ago, KubeCon EU on Alert Manager. <laughs> and that's a lightning talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you want to see more about Alert Manager, and hear me drone on even more, you can go there. Uh, these, by the way, I don't, just as a public service announcement, all of the, tonight's presentations and all of tonight's uh, talks will be posted on uh, innovate.solowinds.io, uh, the, the event site. So, um, so will this link be, and, and you can torture yourself more there. Uh, what I wanted to talk about tonight, though, is um, the notion that um, as we engage in the community, as we um, hear about folks using um, monitoring software, which is of particular interest to us, that uh, you know, we want to engage and, and are encouraging of understanding those tools and, and contributing to those tools. And in this case, um, we've been hearing some pain points about Prometheus, um, which does, uh, does that scraping that we were talking about really efficiently, um, uh, sort of impressively so, uh, much like things that are written at Go. No, no technical bigotry here. Uh, but it uh, has some shortcomings around storage. So the binary that you'll deposit, 
that goes out and scrapes all of your endpoints for um, how healthy they are. It pulls back those metrics, and that's really all it wants to deal with is metrics, and stores them, and it compresses them, and it does it really efficiently. They've just gotten done doing a 2.0 release, um, and it's impressive the way in which they're doing, how efficiently they're doing it. Um, again, more machine learning terms that I'm, you know, not familiar with, but uh, they do that and they store it locally. And part of the issue is they really don't have a high availability system. It's not like you deploy two of these things to make sure that they're constantly monitoring um, the same endpoint. Um, uh, you can do that. They don't talk to each other. They're not aware of each other. It isn't an HA system. So anyway, they store their metrics locally. Um, if your local disk goes down, you lose those metrics. That's not really, like I mentioned the founder's names before, the, main, the core maintainers of this project. They've got some pretty strong opinions about uh, how valuable that monitoring data is beyond a few days or a certain amount of days. And so the default uh, setting here for storing these data, these chunks of data, these metrics, this is how they, it looks like in the file system, is 15 days and after that it's bye-bye. Um, uh, right, what happens is these data chunks get stored in these folders in two-hour blocks. Um, but uh, so there's a shortcoming here around the scalability of that. Uh, um, those metrics, your local disk can only store so much, and the durability of those metrics. If that goes down, you're, you know, you're, you're hosed. <clears throat> uh, so the open source project Prometheus, they have a solution to this, and they have uh, storage, remote storage adapters uh, because they don't want to go into the world of running a, a, a TSDB, a time series database. Uh, some of those are a bit arduous. Um, turns out that uh, we're in the business of, of doing some of that hard work. Uh, we'd recently released uh, a new product um, that, that does that very well, but uh, more on that later. The, the, the solution here being a remote storage adapter, so if you're using Prometheus and you're storing uh, data locally, but you'd like to persist that longer, you'd like to have it durable, then what you can do is write a, a remote storage adapter. You write a small adapter in your language of choice. It would receive uh, those sample metrics from Prometheus. It would deal with maybe translating them and, and sending them over to wherever you're looking to store it. So th these kind of things are like sort of up to you. What, what You can write your own adapter and you can persist it wherever you want to do that. Uh, given that that's an interesting thing to us, we went ahead and, and wrote one, uh, thanks to Mr. Mr. Trevor Rosen, uh, wrote one um, and it performs just that. So it's a small uh, Go binary, um, deployable as a Docker image or Docker container. It handles um, ingestion of metrics, uh, batches up uh, a certain amount of those, um, translates them between how it is that Prometheus uh, uses labels to uh, tag or label each of those metrics with various dimensions, multiple dimensions of things that you're concerned with. Maybe that node that you're scraping was in, um, you know, in AWS and in EU West one and, and, and production, and so you're going to label it with production and, and that geo. And, and anyway, we need to translate Prometheus labels into um, tags in our system. And, and the system I was just telling you about is a new product we just launched at, at reInvent uh, called App Optics. Uh, and so that's the, the, the function of the adapter. Uh, what is App Optics? Oh, I didn't think you'd ask. Good. Uh, it is, uh, to put it, I guess, uh, concretely, or you know, um, simply, it's a, it is a distributed tracing um, offering um, that will uh, also store uh, custom metrics. It's a metrics platform and a tracing platform. Um, so it does store long metrics long term, and it graphs them in a very pretty way, and it does it, uh, uh, and, it and it alerts, and then it does some, some great things. Uh, I'm running out of time. I thought my lightning talk was going to be fast enough. Uh, but um, that helps address part of the challenge that people are having around long-term storage. And so um, we, we wrote an adapter. We've made it um, free and available for those that are doing Prometheus to, to enjoy. And I wanted to bring up um, what that looks like very briefly. Kind of neat. Um, a lot of times, like I said, people use Prometheus in a doesn't have to be in, a, in a, an environment where they're monitoring containers, but, but a lot of times it is, uh, just because it's a, of that flavor of tool. Um, so this is um, one of the dashboards in AppOptics. This is one where we do distributed tracing. That's a whole uh, 
a lot of, uh, that's a whole other talk about what distributed tracing is and, and some of those capabilities. I'd love to, <coughs> love to talk to you guys about that. But um, what I wanted to bring up was uh, this. This is a simple dashboard that just um, is ingesting uh, metrics from uh, a, a Prometheus that's deployed in a Kubernetes environment. It's uh, scraping both metrics off the host and off the container. And so, so cool, very good. Uh, out of time. Uh, with that, do we, do we have a break up next or do we have another speaker? speaker? Two more speakers, more lightning talks. Very good, who do we have? All right, Mr. Garish Ranganathan. Uh, Garish is going to speak to us tonight uh, about um, another open source integration that we've done. Uh, and that has to do with uh, logging of your containers. Your containers generate logs and sometimes you want those, uh, you want to store them locally, and sometimes you don't. Yeah, thanks.